In this video, I'm going to be covering MIP14, which has certainly been a very polarizing map improvement proposal. And we're now going into the fourth week since these changes have been implemented. And I'm gonna go through some of the trends that we've seen already. And I'm going to talk about two concepts that I think are really important, not just to understand MIP14, but to really understand the token system as a whole for this project. And those two concepts are global progress and regional progress. And if you read through the documentation, it can be a little bit confusing. So I put together some visuals, I'm gonna use some some different analogies to help drive home these concepts. And if you've watched my prior videos, you probably know that I've been very involved with this project ever since the very beginning. I have a pretty sizable fleet, but that said, I'm not always going to agree with all the changes that are implemented. And in this case with MIP 14, while I do understand the motivation behind the MIP itself, I don't necessarily agree with the execution of it. And I do have some constructive criticism. I'm going to go through my thoughts on that of course in a very pragmatic way, but I also have to say the sky is not falling here. The rewards are very dynamic. And while we did see a drop off the week following this MIP, we have now two weeks in a row seeing the global rewards recover. And I do expect that that will continue to happen as dash cams ship to some of these regions that aren't reaching 100% yet in their regional progress score. All this is going to make a lot more sense once you watch this video. But I do want to start off with really the two main motivating factors for MIP 14 according to their documentation. So the first thing really has to deal with the overall goal of this project, which is to map all of the roads in the world. There's 60 million kilometers that need to be mapped, but not only mapped once, there needs to be a high refresh rate so that there is a product that can be sold to customers at the end of the day. So really one of the main motivations here is to raise the bar and continue pushing the project forward. And as I get into how region progress is calculated, I think that will make a lot more sense. The other thing that they touched on is the fact that there is a set number of tokens set aside for contributors and they need to balance that between the contributors today and contributors of the future. And they reiterate this here. If the decisions we make today result in unappealing rewards for future contributors, it will prevent the network from living up to its full term potential. So all in all, like I agree with these concepts and I think that, you know, they're thinking about this the right way. That said, later in this video, I am going to come back to a couple of these comments here because while I do agree with the motivation behind MIP 14, again, I think there was a little bit of a miss on the execution. But I do want to speak to these rewards that are set aside for contributors because there is a set number of them. So if you look at the documentation, there are 4 billion tokens or 40% of the total token supply of 10 billion tokens that are set aside for contributors. The way this works is there is a distribution of honey tokens once a week, every Thursday, 80.5% goes to what's called map coverage. Now this category is for people that have a dash cam in their car that are out there collecting imagery. Then you have 10% going to map editing and QA, which is really important for this project because they have to train the ML models that ultimately makes the data valuable so that you can bring revenue through the door and then you have this operational reward at nine and a half percent that will actually decrease over time. I'll cover that in another video uh, because that's a separate MIP. An example of what these tokens would be used for is you know, the AWS bill for storing and processing images. You'll see there are two other categories here. I'm going to come back to these later in this video, but these are separate from the 4 billion token allocation. These top three, the map coverage, map editing and QA and operational reward is drawing from those 4 billion tokens that I showed you in that chart before. Now, when you look at the token, token distribution every week, it's all tied to something called global map progress. So I think the best analogy to use for global map progress is think about it as a group project. So just like any group project, you have individual contributors that are working on different parts of the project and each one of them has a grade associated with their work and those all roll up to the group project grade or score if you will in this case. But the higher the group project score for that week results in a higher distribution or a larger number of tokens that are distributed. Now in this case, there the example I gave, your individual contributors are your individual regions. So all of your different regions are going to be graded based on the progress they're making towards the map. And all those individual region scores are going to combine to get the total global progress score. And inherently, that's going to then determine how many tokens are distributed each week. But in this case, we have certain regions, or you can look at it again as contributors to the group project whose work actually holds more weight than others. And you'll see that here. So if we sort by weight, you'll see there is a strong correlation between the weight and the number of kilometers in a specific region. So I'll use Chicago as an example. There's nearly 120,000 kilometers in total in Chicago.
Chicago as a region, and you'll see the weight here at 0.382. Now, if you go down to West Midlands in UK, you'll see there's only 11,000 kilometers in that region, and therefore it has a lot less weight, 0.036%. So the progress in Chicago is going to be a bigger factor in the overall group project score than the West Midlands, because again, it has more weight in the equation. So the way that each individual region is graded is something called regional progress, and you'll see it in this column here. So all of these regions that are scoring at 100% have a very positive impact on overall global progress score. Now we sort this other direction, you'll see all of these regions here that have 0% progress, those are actually pulling down the overall group project score or global progress score, and that actually has a negative impact on the amount of tokens that are distributed for that week. Now there's one other thing in play that I want to call out, and that is this multiplier here. And this is something that was incorporated back in MIP7. And again, think about these different percentages or this region progress score as the grade for the individual region. If a region scores between 70 and 80%, you get a one and a half times multiplier. Between 80 and 90%, you get a two times multiplier. And over 90%, you get a 3x multiplier. And you'll see this in the multiplier section here. So any region that has you know 100% down to 90% is going to get that 3x multiplier. Again, if you get into the 80s, you have the 2x multiplier and so forth. So I want to dive into how this region progress percentage or this region grade is calculated because it's not super intuitive. By looking at this, you would think that you know, inner London is being mapped 100% and being refreshed every single week. And that's not the case. And actually this calculation that's used is the, really what's being changed with MIP 14. So when you look at how each individual region is graded, there's really three categories that go into that calculation. Coverage is the most important at 60% of the grade, followed by activity at 30%, and lastly, resilience at 10%. Now I'm going to go into the definition of each one of these categories. I'm also going to talk about what changed with MIP 14, give you a real world example of each and what the expected impact was when they incorporated these changes. Starting with coverage, and again, this is the most important aspect when it comes to the region progress score or that grade, if you will. Now, this is calculated over a 28-day rolling average. So your current day, looking back 28 days, and it has to do with the percentage of unique kilometers mapped in a given region. Now, prior to MIP 14, you needed 15% of the kilometers in a region uniquely mapped over a 28-day period. And with MIP 14, they raised the bar to 20%. So I'll give you an example here. Let's say a region has a thousand kilometers, just to keep the math easy. You would need 200 kilometers to be freshly mapped over that 28 day period. Prior to this change, when it was at 15%, roughly 10% of the students in that group project were hitting 100% on this metric. So what they're doing is essentially raising the bar or adjusting the curve is the terminology they like to use. And after moving that requirement from 15 to 20%, they now estimate that 5% of the class will hit that 100% mark. Now going to the second category, and this is again activity. This is worth 30% of each region progress grade. And now this is measured on a weekly basis. And this is a measure of what percentage of total kilometers were mapped in a region. So prior to MIP 14, you need 30%. They made a huge jump up to 75%. And using that same example, let's say you have a thousand kilometers in a region, you would now need 750 total kilometers mapped over the course of a week. Now, in this case, unique mapping does not matter. So you could essentially drive 750 kilometers on the same roads over and over again, but as long as you had a total of 750 kilometers mapped, you would be able to hit that 100% grade. Now, obviously jumping from 30 to 75% was expected to have a pretty big impact here. Before MIP 14, 16% of the students were hitting 100% on this category. After incorporating this change, they expected that to drop down to 4%. So again, adjusting that curve, if you will. Now the last category is something called resilience, and they didn't change anything with this category, but the whole point of this is to not be over-reliant on one contributor in a region. It makes sense because you want to have consistent data. And if you have one contributor that is responsible for too much of the mapping in a specific region, well, if they go on vacation or let's say they get sick or change jobs, you know, they used to Uber and they no longer Uber anymore. The problem is that if you have a customer buying data from that region and they're no longer mapping, then you no longer have the data you need for that customer. So the way this works is you can't have one contributor that's responsible for more than 20% of the overall mapping in a region. So I'll give you an example of this, let's say a region had a total of a thousand kilometers mapped over a 28 day period. You can't have one contributor that's responsible for more than 200 or 20% of those kilometers. And if you do the math there, that means you have to have a minimum of five contributors in a region to hit hundred percent on this metric. And I would say even then it'd be unlikely because all five contributors have to contribute exactly 20% each. But the more contributors you have, the more likely you are to be able to hit this metric. It is only 10% of the overall region grade. So it's not a huge factor, but a factor 
nonetheless. But basically what they're doing here is as more dash cams ship, they're raising the bar or changing the curve to make it harder to achieve that 100%. And I think that does make sense because the goal here isn't to get 20% coverage over a 28 day period or 75% activity. I mean, the ultimate goal here is to get to 100% on all these different metrics, but you know, they have to balance this with the amount of contributors and the dash cams they're shipping to make the calculation fair. But here is what we're seeing. So New York used to score close to 100% every week, but now that they've raised the threshold and made it harder to get a 100% score, you'll see it's hovering around 89%. So not only is that 89% now rolling up to the group project score and bringing that score down and ultimately the distribution of tokens for that week, but it's also only a 2x multiplier versus a 3x multiplier. So contributors in New York have seen a drop off in the amount of tokens they're seeing each week because again, that region progress grade has dropped because they adjusted the curve. So a lot of these regions that were in the 90s and getting 3x multipliers have dropped into the 80s. And a lot of regions that were in the 80s are now dropping down into you know the 70s. And all that is having an impact on the group project score because all those grades roll up into the total global progress. And that does reduce the amount of tokens that are distributed. If we look at the numbers here, you'll see this was the week right before MIP 14 went into place. The total weekly distribution of tokens was 5.53 million honey tokens. After MIP 14 went into place, we saw that drop to 4.046. So that's a 37% decrease in the amount of rewards distributed week over week. Also keep in mind, dash cams were shipping out. So the pie became smaller, but also is distributed amongst more contributors. And that's why we saw this decrease in rewards. That said, as dash cams have shipped, specifically to regions that aren't already scoring 100%, you'll see that their grades will start to increase as they hit these new metrics and get closer to the new curve that was set. And we've seen a two week period now where rewards have been recovering. So again, the week following MIP 14, we dropped down to 4.046 million. And two weeks later, it was up to 4.88 million. So I expect that as these dash cams ship, we will continue to see the global progress or that group project grade continue to tick back up as these different regions start to progress more and more. So hopefully that all makes sense. Now, here's my constructive criticism. I think having a week over week change of 37% is too heavy handed. With one caveat, if you have a having or some type of scheduled token emissions event in the tokenomics that's been longstanding, sure. But having an MIP come out where you have this drastic of a change, I think it's too much. Granted, again, sky's not falling, y'all. We're seeing it recover. And I do think it's worth calling out that we have had a couple of other events, but in the opposite direction in the past, where, you know, this week we jumped from 4.32 up to 5.5. Point five. And going back to March of 2023, we had more than a doubling of the weekly distribution of rewards following other MIPs. Obviously, no one was complaining about those. But look, I would argue those are too heavy handed too. I don't think that you should have changes that drastic week over week in either direction, really. You need more stability. From an optic standpoint, from the community, this doesn't look so much as raising the bar as moving the goalposts. And it also buys less margin for air from the Hive Mapper team. And I used to see this in my consulting job in the solar industry, where I'd be talking to the operations team and they'd say something like, oh man, just weird how certain projects just everything seems to go wrong. And I'd say, well, let's dig into the details on that. And more often than not, something went wrong early on in the project and the customer was disenfranchised or upset about it. And every other little issue then became a much bigger issue and was under the microscope. And with this project now, if you have firmware updates that don't go perfectly or you have delays in shipments, all of a sudden what could be smaller issues become much larger issues and you have FUD spreading throughout the community. And it could, get to a point if they continue to make changes like this where people start to cancel orders and people that have been passively mapping might say, well, I'm not going to turn my camera on today, right? Now, I don't think we're there by any means because as you can see, global progress is still moving in the right direction. You can see that because of the tokens that are distributed each week. We also just set a record for revenue coming into the project. This is more a you know, word of caution for future iterations of these MIPs to be less drastic. If that means more frequent changes that are less heavy handed to, to levelize out the rewards over time, I think that would be a good thing overall for the community and optics especially. Now, the other point of constructive criticism I have here is, you know, I understand that we need to balance the tokens between contributors today and future contributors. But this whole thing about, you know, newcomers see themselves getting less than early adopters did, which creates tension within the community, significantly weakens the incentive to join the network. Well, look, contributors a year from now shouldn't be receiving the same amount of honey per kilometer as contributors today. And the same goes for contributors two years from now, shouldn't be receiving as much honey per kilometer 
kilometers as the contributors a year from now. As the project establishes itself, there's inherently going to be less risk and there's a risk reward aspect here. The other thing is, if this project is around three, four, five, ten 10 years from now, that means that there's a lot of revenue coming through the door and this project is successful. So the price of honey should have correlation with that, meaning that contributors won't need to receive as much honey per kilometer as the contributors today. And I do some questions regarding the methodology of this 5% curve that they're targeting. Because if this is their goal to get to, you know, 4 million tokens distributed weekly, if you do the math there, at that run rate, it would take nearly 20 years to distribute these tokens. You know, you just take that and multiply by 52 and divide that into 4 billion tokens. Now, even two weeks later at 4.88, it does change quite a bit, but it's still just under 16 years to distribute these tokens. And if you read through their documentation, even if we are at 100% progress in every single region, which will likely take years to get to, it would take a minimum of 10 years to distribute these 4 billion honey tokens. So I would like to see them run the metrics at, you know, 6, 7, 8% on the curve rather than this 5% number, because I do have questions whether that is the correct amount. And going back to this, I mean, I think this is something else we need to take in consideration is looking out four or five, you know, 10 years from now, these 4 billion tokens shouldn't be what's keeping the project afloat. I would argue that revenue should be taking over and these consumption rewards and honey bursts should become a much larger percentage of what's driving participation in the network. Now, if you haven't watched my video on MIP15, I highly recommend you watch it. But as it stands today, 75% of revenue coming into the project goes to token burns. 25% with a cap of 500,000 tokens per week goes to contributors in the form of consumption reward. Now that 75% to burns and 25% to consumption rewards is going to have to change over time. And they did put that in the documentation of MIP15, but as more revenue comes through the door, a lesser percentage is going to be able to go to token burns, a higher percentage is going to have to go to consumption rewards. And that is a whole subset of tokens that can go to future contributors. And it'll be tied to the success of the project with revenue coming through the door. You, know, you need to crawl before you walk. You need to walk before you run, okay? And I think we're just at this walking stage now. And I do like that they're looking out for future contributors and the longer-term viability of this project, but I do want us to move from the walking stage to the running stage. And if you look too far out, you could impede your short-term progress and ultimately the long-term viability of the project. Here's the good news. We have seen global progress increase week over week for the last two weeks since this change was incorporated. And as a result, the global token distribution has been on the uptick, which is a good thing. We just had over six 600,000 tokens burned from revenue coming into the project. We're over 19% of the world's roads mapped, which is absolutely amazing. But hopefully you like this video. Again, nothing in this video is financial advice. You should always do your own research. As always, I appreciate your viewership. Signing off, this is Bradley Meyer with The Deep End Connection.